morning and welcome to the next in our series of Bible readings from Acts of the Apostles. Our world is facing a number of different crises at the moment, COVID-19 have been one of them, but also of course the whole Black Lives Matter um, movement coming from the mistreatment, racist injustice towards black people. Um, a very important issue. One of the developments from it has been a whole debate about statues, uh, including statues to religious and even Christian figures from history, because it's been exposed and revealed that many of them were colonialists, racists, slave traders. Uh, and Christianity has, has been seen many times as the religion of the white man, the religion of oppression towards other minorities. In addition, the alliance of the church with the state has often been shown to be uh, an oppressive, uh, exploitative relationship where Christianity has been imposed uh, on other peoples and where religious freedom has been denied many times. And these are facts of history. But I want to share with you a passage today which suggests the opposite, that Christianity truly understood is about religious freedom because Christianity truly understood is about making a free response for or against the true God. And God gives us that responsibility and that freedom to respond to him. Let's read Acts 25, verse 16. Acts 25, verse 16. This is a new governor in town, uh, Felix, Festus. Uh, the old one was Felix. The new one is Festus. It gets a bit confusing. They're very similar. And Festus says this. I told them that it was not the Roman custom to hand over anyone before they had faced their accusers and have had an opportunity to defend themselves against the charges. When they came, with, came here with me, I did not delay the case, but convened the court the next day and ordered the man to be brought in. That's Paul. When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus, whom Paul claimed was alive. He obviously hasn't got a clue what this is about. I was at a loss how to investigate such matters. So I asked him if, if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial there on these charges. But when Paul made his appeal to be held over for the emperor's decision, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Festus is just confused about this. What he sees is an internal dispute, disagreement between a bunch of Jews. He doesn't really want to get involved. He says there's some points of dispute about their own religion and about a dead man named Jesus who Paul claimed was alive. Festus had obviously no idea what this was about. But the point here is that he didn't really want to get involved in an internal religious dispute. He was there to maintain the peace. Now, the Roman Empire was not a perfect democratic liberal system, but they wanted peace and harmony. They didn't want any trouble. So he didn't want to get involved in this internal religious dispute. And that is actually what the state, the government, should do. They shouldn't get involved in religion at all. Instead, there should be religious freedom. Freedom for people to choose the religion that they choose. Now, this is not because we as Christians hold to some uh, liberal political agenda of individualism. But because... God says that everyone needs to make their own choice to follow him or not. And that means they need to be free to choose against him and to choose error, to choose uh, what is not true, to choose falsehood. You know, God, it's often said, God could have made a race of robots that would uh, follow him unquestioningly. Uh, but he didn't. He wanted a free response of love. And that means giving free choice to people even to choose against him. Now, this is not something that's true for all Christianity at all times. Sometimes the Christianity has been allied with the state, sadly. Part of the tradition of Baptists, which I belong to, is that they were one of the first movements in the church, after the New Testament, uh, to support religious freedom. Even, they said at that time, for groups like Jewish people and Muslims. They supported their freedom to follow their own faith as they chose. Of course, we know that in some places, people are not free to choose their own religion. Even today, there are Muslim countries, communist countries, where people are not free. And we need to stand up for the religious freedom of Uyghur Muslims in China. Not that we agree with Islam, but they need to have the freedom to choose and to practice their faith. Baha'i or Zoroastrian in Iran are also persecuted. So religious freedom is for everybody, not just for ourselves. 
One of the things about the existentialist philosophy was that they emphasised the importance of choice. I don't know if the, uh, there's some drilling going on outside. Just started. It might be disturbing this, but I'll, I shall persevere. The existentialist philosophy said we have to choose in life. If we don't choose what we're going to do, if we just go along with the herd, with the crowd, conforming, then we're living an inauthentic existence. And many people do that. But to fail to choose is to choose. It's to choose to stay as we are. To live an authentic life, we need to make a choice, to make a decision for or against the true God. Religious freedom, religious liberty is part of that, a condition of that. And I encourage all of us, everyone listening, maybe you haven't decided decisively to follow Christ. You need to. It's not something that can be assumed. It's something that we need to choose. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you've given us freedom to choose, freedom to decide, freedom to love you or not. And Lord, I just pray for all of us that you will help us to choose a love relationship with you the eternal God, the true God, the God who loves us, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So thank you for being with me today. Just to remind you that our services are all shared live on Facebook on Sundays at 11 o'clock in the morning and 4.15 in the afternoon for our French language service. In addition, on Thursdays, 7 p.m. Uh, for our midweek service, Breathe. If you have any prayer requests, please do send them in. Our intercessors are waiting uh, to pray for you. Also, if you like, you could uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel where these uh, devotionals uh, appear. Then you receive updates. God bless you. God be with you. And he is with you. Amen.